Hey there, I'm Louie, and in this video, we're going to be making this little snowman. Here I have a little finger puppet version with arms, and here's one without arms. Um, so, really quick before I get going, uh, if you want to make this with a top hat, I highly suggest you check out the video before this uh, where I teach you how to make the top hat. I won't be teaching you how to make the top hat in this video, um, uh, but I have a whole video for it, and the pattern is on the blog page for this pattern. Um, the the like written pattern for the top hat is written down on the blog page at clubcrochet.com slash snowman. Um, but I won't be doing this in the video. I already have a top hat made for him. Okay. So in this video, like we, uh, you probably know, we're making this little snowman. And I do a couple of really cool uh, techniques here, uh, including the, well, the biggest thing is that this actually isn't two parts. It's It's one single... Um, single crocheted thing. I call it the seamless seam. I don't really know what it's really called, but um, I like the name the seamless seam, and I really like doing this with this guy's head. It's really funny. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. Well, let's get going. The materials that you're going to need for this pattern, I'm using all worsted weight uh, yarn. You'll need white, orange, and black. Um, you also need brown for making the little arms, which are very simple to make. And, um, yeah, you'll also need some stuffing. The crochet hook I'm using is a size G crochet hook. Uh, and I'm using all worsted weight cotton yarn, but you can use any kind of yarn that you want, um, as long as it's all the same. Uh, yeah, so we'll, I'll be teaching you the different various parts. And as I go, if you look in the description of this video, you'll see um, time codes for each of the rounds. Uh, and those are so you can skip to certain parts or back to certain parts if you want to uh, rewatch how I make certain parts of this pattern. All right, well, let's get started. To start, let's make um, his features, so his nose and his arms. Uh, and like I said, we already have his hat made. So to start, let's uh, get going with the nose. So for the nose, I'm using just some orange yarn. You want somewhat of a long end. And we'll go ahead and make a slip knot. Like, and we'll chain three. One, two, and three. I'm using very um, somewhat different yarn here. And it might be kind of hard to see what is going on. So I'll maybe I'll get a little closer. So in the second chain from the hook, uh, starting working in the back loops only. So if you look at the... If you look at a chain stitch, where's my needle? Here it is. If you look at a chain stitch, there's three parts. There's the top loop, the bottom loop right here, and then on the back, it's kind of hard to see, but right here is a back loop. Now I'm working with very small yarn, so it's kind of tough to see that, but you want to work into the back loops of these chains. And you'll be doing the same thing for the arms. So, working in the back loops only, you want to slip stitch in the first, or I'm sorry, single crochet in the first one. So we'll get our crochet hook into that back loop. You have to like kind of pry it open with your nails there. And I'm just going to be making a single crochet. And you want to pull it really tight and do a single crochet. And this is going to make a kind of like a pointed end there. See, it's like a little pinched pointed end. And in the next back loop, we want to make a half double crochet. So yarn over, we're going to go into that stitch, pry it open with our fingernail, and half double crochet. And that's all there is to the nose. It's really simple, and I like to pinch it so it's very, so it's very carroty. And we'll just cut the yarn. This is probably long enough of an end. We'll chain one and pull it all the way through. That's how we'll make the nose. Okay, so next we're going to be making these little uh, stick hands. And you can use real sticks here. That would be pretty cute. Um, but I'll show you how to crochet them as well. So you'll start with a slip knot. And then it depends how long you want it. Um, but I'm going to chain five. If you chain more, it'll be slightly longer arms. 
So we want to chain 5 using this brown. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. In working into the second chain from the hook, again, we're working only in these back loops. We want to get into the back loop and slip stitch 1. So we yarn over, pull through, and pull through that. That's going to make a real pinched end there. And now you want to chain two, one and two. Pull very tight so it like kind of crimps that end. And then slip stitch into that same hole again right here. Okay? And you can see it kind of makes a little like pointed end. You want to pinch it to make that real pointed. And then in the next three chains over or however many chains you have here, you'll just be doing a slip stitch into these back loops right here. And you're going to want to make two of these, of course, because unless you want your snowman to be a one-armed snowman. Okay. One more. Okay. And that's going to be how to make our little arms. And you want to pinch them so that they look more stick-like. Pretty simple. Make two of those. We'll cut the end here. And you can chain one and just pull it all the way through. And we'll sew that onto the body once we have it. Okay, and now we can finally get working on the body. Okay, so now we are ready to make the body. Um, so we're going to be using worsted weight yarn here. And I forgot to mention for the eyes, uh, you can be using these bullion knots, uh, which is how I make these. Um, the buttons here but for the eyes I like using uh, these little safety bead eyes I think these are six millimeter across uh, you can get them on eBay or Etsy um, or in your like local craft shop uh, but I like using these for eyes I wouldn't suggest using these for eyes and these because uh, I like them to look different but you can do however you'd like so for our body we're gonna be using our worsted weight white yarn here and we're going to make a slip knot. You can either do the magic loop method here or the chain two method. I'm going to be working with the chain two method just because I think it's a little easier to, to see uh, and to explain. So into the second chain from the hook, you want to single crochet six times or into the magic loop. Six single crochets into the second chain from the hook or into the magic loop. Working. Oops, gotta get my yarn a little bit more here. One, two, three, four, five, one more. Six. Okay. So now, into each stitch all the way around for round two, we want to make an increase. That means two single crochets into that stitch. Okay, so an increase into each stitch all the way around. I'm going to be working around this tail to hide it. So we, there's our first one. We do one and two. There's an increase. And you want to repeat that six times total in each stitch all the way around. And that's going to bring us up from six stitches to 12 stitches. Again, Standard Amy Groomy maneuver. <laughs> All right. A few more here. Okay. And that'll be the end of round two. For round three, we want to make it just a little bit bigger. So to do that, we're going to single crochet one in the first three stitches. One, two, and three. So we just single crochet three. That's a pretty easier way to say that. And then in the next stitch, we want to increase. There we go, four and five right there, and increase into that stitch. You can see it. And you want to repeat that three times total. So let's do it again. Three single crochets, one, 
two, three, and then an increase. One and two. Okay, so one more time. And this is gonna bring us up from 12 stitches to 15 stitches. Okay, right here. Okay, so that's gonna be the end of round three. So now for the next two rounds, rounds four and five, we want to single crochet into each stitch all the way around. Pretty simple. There should be 15 stitches all the way. And you can make this longer. You can make this uh, for three rounds or four rounds, and it'll make your snowman a lot larger. But I think just two rounds is the perfect shape. For my snowman. I want to make another one of these snowmen using a uh, bigger yarn. Like this is made with worsted weight cotton yarn, but it'd be really cool to make it with bulky yarn and see how big it gets. I bet you'd be really big. I bet you'd be like that big. But I don't have any bulky white yarn. So I'll have to save that for another day. Okay, so we're on our fifth round now. And if you like this video, um, please let me know by liking the video down below, subscribing and pushing uh, notifications by clicking that little bell. That way you'll be notified whenever I come out with a new pattern. And also, well, we'll talk about that later. Okay, so that's going to be the end of that round. I'm going to stuff this tail end in here. So for our next round, round six, we're going to single crochet three. One, two, three. And three. And then invisible decrease one. An invisible decrease, if you didn't know, you're going to be working in the front loops, meaning the loops closest to you, right here. And you want to get your crochet hook into the first, in the next two front loops, like that. Okay, it's easiest to use your little, your nail and kind of work it around. And then once you're in the two front loops, you want to work a single crochet. That just means pulling through the two loops and finishing up like that. That's an invisible decrease. And you're going to repeat that process of three single crochets and then an invisible decrease three times total. So we'll do it again. Single crochet, single crochet, single crochet, and then an invisible decrease. Go into these two front loops and work a single crochet. And you can use any kind of decrease there but I find an invisible decrease looks best for me. And this is going to bring you down from 15 stitches, or yeah, from 15 back down to 12. Okay, so that's going to be the end of that round. So before we continue, we're going to pull our stitch out there. Let's add the face. So the face is going to be pretty easy. Um, again, we're going to be using these little safety bead eyes. We need two of them. Running low. I gotta order more. I like getting them on eBay because they're very cheap. And you want to have the eyes be pretty far apart from each other. So if I, you know what, let's let's have an exact placement of where I like to put them. Let's find the two increases from previous rounds. So there's one increase. There's another one. And I'm going to put them that far apart. So I'm going to work into this increase. So you can kind of see it right there. See there's two V's in one spot. And I'm going to put it right in between the two. And then I'm going to go to the other one right here. And I'm going to place the other one right in between the two. And that should give me a good distance between the two eyes and we'll place our locker in the eye right there. And you can use uh, bullion knots, which I'll be teaching you in a few minutes once 
we have our body made. Instead of these safety bead eyes if you don't have any. Okay. Now let's add our nose. Here's our nose. And you can make your nose sideways like this, you know, horizontally. Or you can make it vertically. I've never done one horizontally, so let's do let's do a horizontal. Because I I think that's kind of cute too. So grab our needle. Thread one end. And we'll place it right here. Thread the other end. There we go. We'll place it one stitch over right here. And you want to pull it enough so that that little knot comes through. So you can see the little knot right there. I'll show you with this other one. Pull it enough so that knot comes through. See, there you go. And then we will just double knot them on the inside. And this is where you would be adding a hat. Uh, I th I've been thinking about it, and I think I'm going to do this one without a hat, actually because I don't have any without a hat, but I'll show you how um, you would be sewing on the hat. There we go. Got a little eye right there, or I mean our little nose. I kind of like it horizontal. I should have done the other ones horizontal. It looks pretty cute. So if you were adding the hat um, after you've made this, you can see the little, um, the back loops from uh, around here and how you do it is here's the long tail end. We would place it on the top, like so, and you just sew it on using whip stitch around those back loops. Um, if you need help with how to sew, uh, sew together pieces, I have a video um, called How to Sew Pieces Together, um, and there should be a link right here. Uh, and if you can't find it, check out my YouTube channel or um, or my uh, blog at clubcrochet.com. That is a cute hat though, but I want one without one. So put that to the side. Okay, now comes the fun part. Uh, this looks, like I said this before, but it looks like it's two pieces sewn together. But in reality, it's one whole piece. We're just gonna continue on. And how we make this really sharp thing here. I'm calling it the seamless seam. I don't know what the real name for this is. If you know what the name for this is, please let me know in the comments um, because I've been looking for what this thing is called to make a video on how to do it. But um, I'm calling it the seamless seam because it looks like a seam, but it's not a seam. Um, and it's pretty simple to do. So I did it two different ways. Um, I did it once where I decreased in and that makes it a really sharp seam. And then I did one where I didn't decrease in and it made them a little bit fatter. Um, and I'll show you, you'll understand what that means in just a second. In this video, we're going to be making it really sharp, but um, I'll describe how to do that differently. So for our next round, we only want to work into our back loops right here. Okay, you only want to work into these back loops and into each stitch all the way around we want to make a decrease. Um, you can do a simple single crochet two together, which would just be pull loop through, pull loop through the next, and then um, pull loop through all three on the hook there. But I'm going to be doing a sharp decrease, and I'll show you what that means in just a second. If you want it to be slightly fatter, just do a single crochet into the back loops of all the stitches around. But we want them to be a really sharp one uh, so it looks a lot like it's seamed together. So to do that, we're going to be working into this back loop and we're going to be making a decrease. So a decrease is you yarn over and pull loop through and then you go into the next stitch right here. We yarn over and pull this new loop through all the loops on the hook. And that's called a sharp decrease. It's what I call a sharp decrease. It really pulls it in. Um, uh, it's what I usually do at the end of a piece. So I'm going to do that in each stitch all the way around. There should be six of these sharp decreases. But again, if you want them to be slightly fatter, do uh, just a single crochet into each stitch all the way around. 
but I'm going to be doing these decreases to pull it in and only working into those back loops. Okay, just a few more here. When it gets really small like this, I just pinch it to make it easier to tell what I'm doing or else it can be a little confusing. And there we go. Okay, so now you should have six stitches all the way around. One, two, three, four, five, six, yep. And you should have 12 of these back loops. Um, I'm not gonna count because I know there's 12 there. So for our next round and how we're going to make it really pull like it looks like a seam, is you wanna stick your hook into the this back loop of the next stitch and then into the front loop of the round we just made. See, I'm just going into that front loop. And you wanna work a single crochet into that. Um, wait, let me, let me describe this a little bit better. So we're going to work increases into each of the stitches all the way around in our previous round. So into each of these front loops, we're going to work an increase. Simultaneously, while we're doing that, we want each of these stitches, every stitch from the increase, to go through one of these. I'll show you how that um, that happens. It sounds more confusing than it really is. We want to work our hook into the next stitch right here, into the front loop from the previous round, and then into the back loop from the round we just made, and work a single crochet into that. And then we want to work our hook into the next front loop right here. Let me zoom in a little bit. Right here, there's our next front loop. And into the same back loop that we just worked in right here. I'm doing this so you can see it a little better. So that's this back loop is what we just worked into, our last single crochet. And this front loop is the next one across. So we're basically doing an increase into that same back loop and just a single crochet into this front loop and we will work our next stitch and we'll repeat that all the way across so now we work into our next front loop right here get it into that and then into the next stitch along from the previous round which is going to be right there and we work a stitch into that one I'm going to pull it slightly tighter and then go into the next front loop right here and into that same back loop right here. Don't lose track. It's, hard. it's, it's easy to lose track, but try not to. Okay, let me pull it tighter. Let's do it again. Next front loop and then the next stitch, which is going to be right there. Work a single crochet, then into the next front loop, into the same back loop, and see I'm already losing track here. If you lose track here, this is how you can count back to where you're at. So if we count over, here's the next front loop, we only have one, two, three, four, five, six front loops left. Into the back loops, we should have three. So if we count over from where our six is, we've got one, two, and three. I know this is confusing. Um, I totally realize that. If you don't want to do it this way, you could just make two halves that are slightly one slightly larger than the next, and I'll explain that in just a second. But I like this way. I think it's cool. It's unique. Okay, so we got one. And then we want to go to our next front loop right here. Same back loop. Increase in that last one. Two more. Front loop. 
pack loop. Well, next stitch, last stitch. I'm gonna do a video explaining this a little bit more um, pretty soon. It might already actually be out. Okay, next stitch, next stitch. That one kind of lined it up really well. Okay, and last one right here. It's hard to see on the video, but right there. Okay, and then work into that back one right here. And there we go. That's going to be the end of that round, The definitely the most confusing round in the whole piece. So how we're going to count to make sure, and you can see, look how it looks like it's seamed on there, but it's not. So we're going to count backwards. We should have 12 stitches around. So we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Right there, this one is our 12th one. That's our first stitch in the next round. So for our next round, now that we have that weird, confusing thing done, we will work a single crochet into the first stitch from the next round. And then an increase in the next one right here. An increase into that one. And you want to repeat that process six times total to go up from 12 Wait, yeah, from 12 to 18. So let's do it again. Single crochet into this piece, this one. And then an increase into the next. Now, if you want, instead of doing this weird, confusing, uh, seamless seam thing, even though I think it's kind of fun, uh, it might be easier just to make two halves and then sew them together. Uh, one that's 18 stitches around and the other one that is... Um, that is only 15 stitches so I don't know if that really makes sense comment below if you need a little bit more explanation of what I was just trying to say okay so I'm almost done with this round and for the rest of our piece it's pretty simple the reason I like to do this seamless seam not only because it's a little bit of a challenge and it's kind of a cool uh, thing to make but the other reason is uh, it gives me the opportunity at the end to make him a finger puppet because I want it to work all the way from the top to the bottom otherwise it would be very difficult to make him a finger puppet I'm not making this one a finger puppet but this gives you the opportunity if you do want to make it that so for the next let's see I think it's two rounds one, two, oh no, three rounds. I'm sorry. For the next three rounds, it's just a single crochet into each stitch all the way around. So we just make a single crochet into every stitch all the way around. Pretty, pretty simple. So I'll go ahead and finish three rounds single, cro single crochets. And I will be right back. Okay, so I've just finished uh, the three rounds of single crochets. In our next round, we want to work a single crochet into the first stitch, and then an invisible decrease into the next. An invisible decrease, remember, is you're working into the front loops here, and you're doing a single crochet. And you want to repeat that six times total, that process of doing a single crochet, and then an invisible decrease here. You want to repeat that six times to go from 18 stitches down back down to 12. So just a few more. And then after this, we can add our, um, our little buttons and our, um, our arms and whatnot. Just a couple more here. In fact, just... Is the last one, I think. Yep. Yeah. 
Okay, so now we can add uh, the arms and the buttons. Uh, usually I like to add three buttons. I'm going to try to add just two on this one. Uh, I think he, he feels like he wants two more, or just two. You'll get our black yarn, and we're going to make something called a bullion knot. So you want a little bit of black yarn. That's probably good. Throw it on a needle. Um, I'm using this darning needle here. And we're going to find out where we want our uh, buttons. Let's say we want one right here. And you want to come in through the one side, the uh, one, one stitch. Oops. So right like this. And pull it almost all the way through, about like that far left. Okay. And hold the needle like so, and hold the yarn like this up put it up like so and you want to wrap the needle around the yarn three times then go into the next stitch while keeping holding the yarn up and go into the next stitch over right here and you want to push it almost all the way through until there's just a little bit left of that needle and you want to pull this end the end inside and this top bit pull them both so that it tightens the knot and then grab the knot with your two fingers and pull the needle through get it around the head and that's going to make like a little little dot and you can see it kind of made like a weird little thing there. So if you want to fix it and make it really a tight one, you can pull the knot up and just pull it tight. But don't pull it too tight. Just like you just want it to be like a little round knot. There we go. And then on the inside, we're going to double knot it twice. One. and two. And we want to make another bullion knot. I'll do it again. We can cut it. Let's make another bullion knot just under that first one. So we go in through one side, pull almost all the way through, leaving a little bit end. Hold it up, wrap the yarn around the needle three times. One, two, three, go into the next stitch, oh boy, <laughs> there we go, go into the next stitch while keeping position, go almost all the way through, leaving just a little bit of end there, and pull this end on the inside and the end on the top, so that's tight, grab the knot and pull the needle through, And then if you don't like the knot, I kind of like that one, but if you don't like it that much, you can pull it out and you can reshape it. Just don't pull it too tight or else it will not really look like a knot anymore. Okay, that's pretty, I'm pretty okay with that. And we can double knot down the inside. And then finally, um, we can add our arms exactly like how we added our nose. Okay, and we'll cut the inside here. We're done with that black yarn. Grab our arms here. And we want the arms on each side of the body, of course. <clears throat> so you thread each end one by one, and we place it on the side of his body, let's say like right, uh, let's say like right there. And then grab the other one, 
and place it in the next stitch down. We want this one to be more vertical because remember how we did horizontal for the nose. We want this one to be more like vertical. Pull it almost all the way through and then you just want to pull it until the knots on the inside pop out. There's one knot and there's the other one. And you can double knot it on the inside. Double knot the knots. Wow. There we go. Okay, so there's one arm. And we'll do the other one on the other side. And while I'm doing that, um, I, th I was thinking while I was making the single crochets of the body, this pattern, this like shape, would be really cool for um, uh, the penguins from Super Mario 64. I think it kind of does like the same kind of thing, that, that seamless seam. Um, I really like that name, but I'm sure it's got a different name. And I'm going to... I'm going to do more research after this to find out what that is. And then I'll look like a big dum dum. But it would be a really cool really cool technique for making things like that penguin from Super Mario 64. Like the little baby penguins. We'll double knot here. Okay. It's a long video. Okay. Now to finish up our piece, um, we want to start by stuffing it up to the head. Uh, I like taking a pencil like this, just like that. Grab our stuffing, which is right here. And first we want to stuff it all the way up till we get to the head. So this is probably more than enough stuffing. And place it into the body slightly take your pencil and stuff all the way up to the head. See it on the inside, me stuffing it up there. There we go. Okay. And then uh, we'll stuff the body in just a second. This is where you would want to... Um, Right now is where you'd want to switch over to making a finger puppet. If you want to make it a finger puppet like this, you know, want to make Frosty the Snowman as a finger puppet for like little finger puppet shows for your kids. Um, there's a video I have for how to turn your characters into finger puppets. Um, it's on my YouTube channel or at clubcrochet.com slash finger puppets. Otherwise, we're just going to uh, sew it closed. Uh, uh, decrease down until it's so sewn closed. So for this final round here you will be decreasing in each stitch uh, a lot like how we did on the neck so you go into the next stitch this time you want to work into both loops here pull a loop through go into the next stitch again and pull another loop through loops on the hook like so and you'll repeat that six times total to go down from 12 to 6 so that's one two Oopsies. Three. Four. And then just two more. Five. And then our last one will be six. And I have a video for how to uh, sew closed, but I'll go ahead and show you again. Um, before I do, just in case uh, some people are going to be leaving right now, um, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I really appreciate um, you watching this video. Make sure to like the video down below and subscribe if you're not subscribed yet. I'm going to go ahead and stuff this with our pencil. Um, I really appreciate you watching the videos uh, and consider becoming a Club Crochet member where you get these videos early and you get a bunch of other um, patterns and projects like how to make this little reindeer. This is uh, one of this month's patterns. Um, I'll also be doing 
uh, how to make it into Rudolph and stuff like that. So now we want to sew it closed. So if you don't know how to sew closed, I'll show you real quick. You want to count over three stitches, one, two, three, go in through the top, and then go in to right across. This is not a, the stitch that we counted, one, two, three, up. That's like a zero stitch. Pull it through, and you kind of want to make an asterisk. So you want to go count one over, go in and go across, and you can pull this one tighter now. And I have a video where I explain this in a lot of detail. Count one stitch over, and you're just kind of like going, yup, 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 yup. And finally, we'll go through our last stitch right here. Thanks again for watching. I'm gonna go through the back, and then go through the very bottom to knot it closed. Pasta la pizza. There we go. And happy hooking. Frosty the snowman was crocheted this way today. <laughs> Bye, guys.